I'm Tom Baker, this is Chasing Cars, and this is the BMW X1. Now, the X1 is a very popular vehicle because it is the most affordable way into buying a crossover with a BMW badge on the bonnet. And for a lot of people, that matters a ton. But what also matters is whether or not the X1 is a good luxury small SUV because this market is becoming more and more competitive. There's Audi's new Q3, which is excellent. There's the Mini Countryman, which is surprisingly good to drive and live with. And of course, there's the forthcoming Mercedes-Benz GLB and the new GLA. So the X1, which is the kind of oldest of that bunch, but only recently facelifted, has got to live up to the task. So does it? Well, that's what we're going to be finding out in today's review, checking out this X1 xDrive 25i, which is on the expensive side for an X1, but you can get into one of these vehicles for much less if you're okay with front wheel drive and a smaller engine. So in this video, we're going to be checking out the interior of the X1, seeing how many people you can fit in it and how big that back seat is, checking out the boot and then heading out onto the road in the BMW X1 to see what this small Bavarian crossover is like to drive. But before we do that, go below the video, hit subscribe to help us out and make sure you never miss out on any of our full length uploads. So what's the X1 like inside? Well, it isn't as modern as some newer BMWs like the new 3 Series because the X1 is getting on in years now. The cabin is based around, it's kind of like a former BMW design, but that doesn't mean it's bad because, I mean, BMW cabins are always pretty similar and they're essentially based around the same kind of design elements. And that starts with this floating uh, touchscreen up here. So it runs the second most recent version of BMW's iDrive, so it does have touch capability. Uh, but you can also control it through the traditional BMW iDrive controller down between the seats. Now, it's important to note that this isn't the fully spec version of the controller. There's no touchpad on top to input like letters into the satellite navigation. It's just a you know twist and push kind of system. Not that there's anything really that wrong with that. You do get wireless Apple CarPlay as standard. BMW have scrapped that thing where you were supposed to subscribe to it after a year or whatever because that was silly. You now get it with the car for life. So the infotainment works well. Stock stereo is fine. You do have to spend more, even in this top spec X1, to option in premium audio. Mm, seems a little bit nickel dimey to me. Now, in front of you, you have really attractive analog gauges. It's a shame BMW have now done away with these for the newer cars, like that new 3 Series, because they do look great. You also get the previous design of the M Sport steering wheel, which everybody loved, including me. It's perfect size, not too thick. It just feels really good in the hand. You also get a stitched, like, I guess faux leather, but really just soft, soft touch plastic dashboard. You also have contrast stitching down here on this panel, uh, which kind of matches the seats. So we have the black leather seats here in the X125i. They're fairly comfortable, quite supportive. Got really deep lumbar on the driver's seat. You can get other color choices as well if you want to sort of bring the, the, the interest up a little bit in the cabin. Now, in terms of practicality, it is good. We've got big cup holders. We have an adjustable armrest here with wireless phone charging with a really good phone holder in it. Uh, we have a decent sort of space beneath that with a USB-C port to fast charge your devices and decent sized door bins. So up front, the X1 is pretty good. What's it like at carrying kids and adults in the back? Well, the answer is, is actually that the X1 is pretty good here in the back. In fact, it's one of the best in this set of small luxury SUVs, probably because the BMW X1 is actually on the slightly larger side for this class, certainly a lot bigger than vehicles like the outgoing Mercedes-Benz GLA, almost a full size bigger. So that means that for backseat passengers, the dividend comes in more room. So I'm six foot tall. I have plenty of headroom, despite the fact this vehicle has the optional panoramic sunroof. Legroom behind my own driving position is also fine and tow room is very generous. I got lots of room to move down there. You could actually fit five people in this vehicle at a pinch because the hump in the floor is not too big, despite the fact we have the X-Drive all-wheel drive system on this vehicle. The seat is inclined far enough, but I think the squab back here is just a bit short. But that said, I reckon almost anybody would be comfortable in this vehicle for an extended period. Plus, the windows are really large, so we've got a nice view out. In fact, visibility is an all-round positive in the X1. You also have a few toys back here. We've got air vents, which is great for a hot country like Australia. 
two fast charging USB-C ports. So two iPads back here will last the distance. And we have a pull down armrest between the seats with deployable cup holders. So you can kind of rest your arm and feel pretty comfy back here. Plus soft touch materials, it feels fairly premium. And then the back seats themselves can actually move. So if you want to maximize boot space, you can move the seats quite far forward until they have no legroom, or you can push them all the way back. And they also have a bit of a trick in that they can be reclined, if I can find the pull, quite a way actually. So I can imagine myself drifting off to the land of Nod on a road trip, as long as I wasn't driving, of course. So the back seat is actually very decent, and so is the boot, and that's where we're going now. It's here around the back of the 2020 X1 that I think this vehicle's recent facelift is most evident. The taillight graphics are totally different. Around the front, you get stuff like a bigger grille, naturally. But I think this is where you know that you're dealing with a new X1. And around the back, it's also hiding a nice practical boot. The X1 is one of BMW's wagon-bodied SUVs. The odd numbers are the wagon bodies and the even numbers are the coupe SUVs. So, this vehicle's counterpart is the X2. The X1 is the most practical of the pair, naturally. So we have 505 liters of space in this boot. It's a nice square space, no load lip, and you've got this stainless steel thing here so you're not gonna scratch the paint as your suitcases come out. You do have two cubbies, one on either side of the boot, which is always nice. And this xDrive 25i model does come with an electric tailgate, which makes it nice and easy to load stuff if it's raining or if you have your hands full. But what is the new X1 like out on the road? Well, it turns out that while the X1 is quite attractive, quite comfortable and quite practical, its driving dynamics are perhaps surprisingly not one of its best features. It's entirely fine and it's entirely fit for purpose and this particular one has quite a nice engine but it isn't one of the best driving vehicles in its class and given it's a BMW, I suppose that's kind of surprising. But let's talk first about what motivates this X1. So we have the xDrive 25i model here which is a bit of a mouthful. What that means is it has all-wheel drive and it has the most powerful turbo four-cylinder petrol in the range. So it's the B48 engine making 170 kilowatts of power and 350 newton meters of torque. And that's plenty in an SUV this small. And true to form, the X1 gets up and goes well uh, off the line and it makes a, a pinch out of overtaking. Uh, the same can really be said of the diesel option in the range, which has heaps of torque, more torque than this petrol. And then there's two lower powered turbo petrol models, one with three cylinders at the uh, entry point of the range and one with four cylinders and uh, front wheel drive, unlike this all wheel drive 25i model. So there's lots of choice. Um, but this high output four cylinder is quite expensive and I don't think it's necessary to go this high up the range in order to get you know, a reasonable experience. That said, the engine's very refined, quiet and under load, it actually can sound quite good. And it pairs decently to the eight speed torque converter automatic transmission that's fitted to this car as standard. The shifts are crisp, uh, you're always pretty much in the right gear and you know, the power is delivered well enough. There's a small delay in sending torque to the rear wheels in slippery conditions, but all in all, you make pretty good progress in this vehicle. Now, the steering is a bit last generation BMW when I think they were a bit wayward with their steering feel. Newer cars like the new 3 Series have corrected it, but the steering is a little bit slushy, um, a little bit sort of lacking in feel and, and a sort of an odd weighting, I find. I think that the sport mode selection corrects that, even though you get then quite artificially heavy steering, it just feels a little bit better. But in the standard mode, I'm not a huge fan of the steering. That said, you do get the outputs at the front wheels that you expect, and it's happy to track a line through most corners if you drive gently. It's when you start to pick up the pace in the X1 that things kind of start to unravel a bit. Uh, it's on quite skinny tires for a relatively tall wagon bodied SUV, only 225 series. And they can just start to feel a bit overwhelmed at the front end when you're sort of loaded up and really committing to a corner. Now, most X1 drivers are not gonna do that, but it's a BMW, it should be able to. So you, it can start to sort of hop laterally on its front outside tire when you're cornering hard, which is a bit disconcerting. And kind of adding to that is that the suspension tune to me doesn't feel right. So we have the 19 inch wheels in this car 
and the um, fixed M Sport suspension, and I don't think they pair all that well. Um, you get quite a bit of float and pogoing over bumps, and then, you know, at times in town, the damping's actually okay. But on a country road, it, um, it falls to pieces after you start pushing, you know, past about seven or eight tenths, which again, I reiterate, most people aren't gonna do, but you should be able to in a BMW. It's just not all that confidence inspiring. But if you drive it gently, if you're mainly gonna stay in town or on the highway, or you just like gentle country touring, there's nothing wrong with the X1. However, if you're after a more sporty experience, uh, even BMW Group's own Mini Countryman is more fun to drive. The new Audi Q3 I think feels a bit more sorted. Uh, even something mainstream like a Mazda CX-30. Equally, even though we're at the top end of the X1 range, we don't have stuff like adaptive cruise control and lane keep assist, not even blind spot monitoring, which isn't supported by the X1's older platform. So we just have normal cruise control in this car and city speed autonomous emergency braking, which I think leaves a bit to be desired. So those are our detailed impressions of the 2020 BMW X1. All in all, I think this vehicle's recent facelift has improved the design quite a bit and it continues to be a pleasant driving, practical vehicle to own. I think that there are sportier options, which is perhaps a surprise given that's kind of always been BMW's bread and butter. The X1 is more about laid back comfort than out and out hard driving, but given the kind of demographic and who's gonna be buying these vehicles, I don't think that's necessarily a problem. Let me know down below this video if you like the BMW X1 or if you think its rivals do the job better or if you think stepping up to an X3 is a better decision or of course a 3 Series Touring which is always the right answer. While you're down there, let me know if you have any requests for the channel. Hit subscribe, the notification bell and as always, thanks for watching.